If Gaza were this three-story house, it would echo with cries for help. No balconies, no windows, a charred backyard, and a broken door. On the first floor, you'd find children, countless children. One whispers, I recognize my dead mother by her hair. Another, fearful, asks, have you seen my dad? I only have a picture of him. A third, holding a broken toy, asks you to play hide and seek, a game where no one is found. The kitchen is a quiet void with only empty pots. The growl of empty stomachs is the only sound, piercing the stillness. The refrigerator door hangs open, exposing its emptiness. On the counter, the remnants of a half-eaten apple and a piece of rotting meat lie among scattered breadcrumbs, evidence of a frantic search for the last scraps of food. A dark refrigerator casts eerie shadows, highlighting the lack of food. The pots seem to echo the children's cries and the harsh sounds of metal blending with the emptiness of the room. As you leave the first floor, your footsteps trace a path of blood to the second floor. Here, you find a haunted room filled with the souls of those who never got to say goodbye, those whose cries went unheard. You see the spirit of a six-year-old struck by over 300 bullets after witnessing her sibling's death. Nearby, the torn body of a seven-year-old girl hangs from a fence. The faint voice of a child with Down syndrome, abandoned to savage dogs, calls out softly, Habibi, stop. Covered in blood, you climb to the final floor, where severed limbs are scattered. You hesitate, seeing an amputated hand with a ring, the tiny head of a three-month-old baby, and eyes that seem to follow you everywhere. Overwhelmed and shaken, you rush back downstairs, desperate to escape but the haunting voices and lingering images force you to stay. You find yourself sitting in the hallway, paralyzed by the silence, as the weight of the house's sorrow presses down on your heart, never leaving. <laughs>